Well, welcome to the very first TV episode of At Home with Jim and Joy. We bless your lives and we just pray that the arms of Christ and his church somehow, some way would pull you into himself. Joy, how happy are we and blessed for this time? We are so excited. We have this fabulous new set that so many people worked so hard to pull off and it's absolutely beautiful to be at home with Jim and Joy. And one of our great hopes is that you, our listening audience out there, you know that you're a part of the family. You know, one of the great things about Mother Angelica was when she started this mission, she had two visions that she really felt God called her to, was one to his intimate union with her Lord, her beloved Jesus. And then the other was to make him known to the whole world that you too and I could love Jesus as she did. So every day for five hours a day, all of the nuns, would, would separate themselves and be in adoration and in prayer to set this network ablaze to the whole world. And so now we're a part of that, where we get to talk about in this day and time about life and marriage and family. And we all know if you're married, if you have a life and you have children, your marriage and your life and your family is under attack. We want At Home with Jim and Joy to be the lighthouse for you, where you can say, that's a safe place. They're talking about me. They're talking about my life. Yeah, and the great news about true family, which really begins in God. I mean, God is a community of life and love, a family, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all that we have emanates from Him, that love. And really hope that each one of you out there will get the sense that you're loved simply for who you are, that you are God's child, you're God's daughter, no matter how old, how young, how whole, how broken, that's the way it is in our house, that the essence of your being is first. You're a member of this family simply because of who you are. And you always belong, no matter what you've done. And we've had grown children, and our grown children have hurt us just by some of the life choices that they made. But we don't throw them away. You don't kick each other to the curb. We hung in there. We loved them. Yeah. And we brought them back into the family and said, this is who you are. This is where you belong. Yeah. And so those are the, some of the things that we really want to share, to bring hope to families that are struggling and that are broken and that need a life message. Yeah. We really want you to be at home with us and at home in your own being. I love what John Paul II would always say, that he was calling us back to who we were, mm -hmm. reflections of the image and likeness of God. Become who you are. You're children of God. You're a part of the family. Be confident in that. And then move out in love, God's divine affirming love, and, and convey that to your wife, to your children, to your friends, to your enemies. Mm -hmm. And not only do we give sacrificial love, and that's what this show is about, because EWTN is about Jesus Christ and about the church, but you give the essence of the person to the person. That's love. Not only that I give myself, but I wanna give you, you, as my wife, I wanna give my children who they are, and Christ is coming to us in his love, coming to us through the church, coming to us through the sacraments, and loving us in this way that we could fully become who we are and be on this mission of sharing the life and love of the Lord. And on this beautiful set, hon, we have these great pictures of some of our days gone by, our marriage and our family, and just some wonderful moments, because we all have treasured memories in Absolutely. our lives, right? We all have treasured memories, and we want to be a blessing so that you can look at us and go, hey, they're just like us. Right. And God has a plan and a purpose for my life too. We have a very special guest today in Martha Fernandez Sardina. Remember you are loved is her apostolate and remember that you are loved. You're a part of the EWCN family. You're safe, you're secure, and you're always at home with Jim and Joy.
Welcome back to At Home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is Martha Fernandez Sardina. She is the director of Prepare the Way Enterprises and the director of ministry called Remember You Are Loved. So Martha, it is so good to have you at home with Jim and Joy and to be our very first guest. I am very honored and pleased to be with you. Well, why don't you tell us about the origin of Remember You Are Loved and its mission? Well, I've been in the work of uh, the field of evangelization for over two decades. I had a conversion experience at the age of 15. I read the entire New Testament between the age of 14 and 15 so that I would find the evidence. I was in search of the evidence for those claims that Christ made about himself, and I was smitten. I was taken head over heels, fell in love with Christ. And I began evangelizing at the age of uh, 15. Even at my graduation, I received with my diploma a little plaque that reads, for your desire to know Christ and make him known to others. So the message of love, of Christ's love, is a very personal one for me. I've always had it, and in the field of evangelization, we all know, what are we messaging people with? What is God? What's his message to humanity? John says in John 3:16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's the gospel, love. But how did this start? Something that we know so well, we forget. Mm -hmm. And it just dawned on me a little over a year ago that we're not telling people as often as we ought, that we're not showing and telling, like in kindergarten, first grade, mm -hmm. show and tell. Yeah. We're not showing and telling the world, people, how deeply and dearly loved they all are by God. And that we too, as Christians, have forgotten how deeply and dearly we must love others. And so I like to talk about the fact that we're all lovable and we're all love able. And so there were a number of encounters that I had that got me started with this apostolate when I realized, you know what, we really need to show and tell people more clearly that they are loved. It reminds me of the teaching of John Paul II, St. John Paul II, uh, in uh, his teaching on, on the family, that God is a community of life, a community of love, and that everything emanates from that, from that love, and comes to us. And the critical nature of knowing that we're loved, I think that's the key thing, and that we're lovable. I don't know how many mm -hmm. of us walk around saying, I'm lovable, uh, but how do we find that out? How do we know that we actually are lovable? How does that come to us? Or can we just love ourselves into being lovable and knowing that we're loved? What's the process of that? Since God is love, he wants us to know we're loved. How does that take place? Well, let's go back a step on how this came to me uh, in, and I began it. I, I saw at the, you know, when the official uh, holiday season begins, which is when? After Thanksgiving. That's it. <laughs> so you get all the ads with all the things. And I got an ad that had a, a, a portrait and it said, you are loved. And I said, I like that. I'm going to get it for myself. And so I said to myself, really self? You're going to get it for yourself? Mm -hmm. You don't tell yourself I'm loved. You need someone mm -hmm. to tell you from the outside in, right. which right. is at this what you're saying. Right. How do we know we're loved? Someone else, right. hopefully our parents, right. our grandparents, right. our siblings right. and so forth. So I said to myself, I'm going to get it for a gift. So I decided to give it to all my nephews and nieces for Christmas. So I had this little, I went to the store. They didn't have it. I went online. I couldn't find it. So I had it printed and it said in black and white letters, you are loved. And I wanted it in black and white, and I had someone design it for me that way, because this is a black and white issue. Mm -hmm. There's no ifs or buts. You, you, I, every one of our mm -hmm. listeners and viewers are loved. Yeah. So I had it printed and framed, and I wrote a little card to my nephews and nieces, and I said something to this effect. You may not be the smartest, you may not be the prettiest, but remember, you are loved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may not become the most uh, wealthy or the most uh, popular, but remember, you are loved. Mm -hmm. And I said about three times, and then I ended, by God and by me, love Tia Marta, mm -hmm. Aunt Martha. <clears throat> and I gave it to them and they all thanked me. But the expression of two of them caught my attention. And I don't even know that they know this to this day. One of them, he's very quiet. You ask him, how'd it go? Mm. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. You text him, he'll ne never text you back. And I am told that this is not just with me, mm -hmm. <laughs> his mother, mm -hmm. my, my brother, his, uh, his siblings. And he looked at me and he went like this with his head and he said, mm. so are you. Mm. And he bounced it back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I realized mm -hmm. the person who receives it mm -hmm. gives it right back. Right. Then I have a niece who has declared herself for the time being anyway to be an atheist. And she thanked me and then she sat there quietly and said, isn't he a neat guy or a neat God, I'm not sure, that on his birthday we get gifts. Mm. And I thought to myself, mm -hmm. the atheist is mm -hmm. praising God. Mm -hmm. So how do we learn 
to be loved, especially when someone else tells us. When, when we see that God Almighty has loved us, but we see it through people, right. God with skin on. Right. And that's what got me going with this. I thought, oh my gosh, this simple message that supposedly all of us know, and that we do know, we need to hear it. Yeah. It has the potential to draw out of the most quiet individual a response. It has the potential, event, uh, uh, potentially it could be evangelistic, mm -hmm. to have someone who doesn't have faith Praise God. And then I came back to my, the office and I met with somebody who came to my office at the time I was the director for evangelization for the Archdiocese of San Antonio. And I get talking with this lady and she shares with me that she had been abused by her grandfather from the age of three through 13, mm. sexually abused. Mm. And then she married a man who had uh, verbally and mm. emotionally abused her for 40 years. And I thought, this lady has no idea right. how deeply loved she is. Right. So remember those printouts? They had uh, printed by mistake about 120 <laughs> mm -hmm. at the store, so they gave them to me and I had them. So I wrote on it, no matter what has ever been said to you that should not have been said to you or done to you mm. that should not have been done to you yeah. or not said and done that should have, right. remember you are loved. And mm. she started weeping. Mm. Yeah. So I hugged her and I realized at that moment, here we have a simple message that people need to hear. So back to your question, how do we know that? when another individual who has received the love of God becomes a love messenger. In fact, Pope Francis says that, he says that we are the ones who receive love in turn go out and give love. He says, let us ask our Lord to help us bear shining witness to his mercy and his love in every area of our lives. He said, be missionaries of God's tenderness. Right. That's what we're called to be. That's Beautiful. right, and now especially at this time in our day, um, why now? Why, why does everybody need to know that they are so loved? Because the problem is, is we're in faith. Uh, we have people of faith, people who are in the church, who uh, almost like repel it. It's like in the, in the, the center of their person, they almost, they don't believe it. Because um, could it really be so that an extravagant, merciful God who knows the worst thing about me would mm. love me unconditionally. Why don't we get that? Here's a problem, I think. We're living in a world that has become very hardened. There's a quote here that I like to, um, to use sometimes. It's from someone who was put to death by the Nazis. It was a German Jesuit priest who was put to death in a Nazi camp. And he said that the mandate to love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength has been all but forgotten. Mm. And the mandate to love our fellow persons, our yeah, neighbor, neighbor as ourselves yeah. has too. And he said this, present day humanity's incapacity for love, for reverence, for appreciation has its roots in arrogance and in this petrifying mm. of existence. What mm. does he mean? We have allowed our hearts to become petrified, mm. to become hardened. It seems that we're so busy with things, with the material things, with promotions and power and, and prestige and so forth, that we have let our hearts become hardened. So we don't let others in as much as we ought. It's like we're not paying attention mm -hmm. to the people that are around us. And so when you have a society in which you're not receiving the love of God, so you're not becoming a vessel of love, and in which you're ignoring your neighbor because you're too concerned with yourself, mm -hmm. that creates a society in which these kind of things, which this Jesuit priest suffered, which is even Nazism, the hardening of hearts of an entire, of a man, you know, Hitler, and then an entire society that followed his rule, in killing others, and right. we have that today right. with so many other ways. We kill people with our tongue. Right. We kill people with our looks. Mm -hmm. We kill babies in our wombs, mm -hmm. sadly. So there's a real problem. There's a problem of love in the world. We're not receiving God's love, and that's why evangelization is basically messaging the world with God's love. Mm -hmm. it's, isn't that how Jesus mm -hmm. began his ministry? Mm -hmm. yeah. God so, so, so loved the yeah. world. Mm -hmm. That's how I like to read yeah. John 3. And it's, it's movement. I mean, love is movement. I mean, God is moving tor towards us. The Father's moving towards us. Love is movement, reaching out to the other, speaking, touching, sacrifice. Love is, is the cross. How are you equipping people to bring this message? How are you training them? How are you encouraging them uh, to know that they are loved and then to become who they are? And not only in being loved, but to give <coughs> their lives. Those who lose their lives find their lives. Those who find their lives lose their lives. So we're meant to love, not only know that we're loved, but to love. I love the way you said to become who we are yeah. because that is the most natural thing really is to love. 
That's the way we are created. We are created in the image and likeness of God, and God is love, the Bible tells us. We know that God is love. That's why Jesus became incarnate. So for me to be myself fully, whom I'm meant to be, I need to be love. I need to be a love messenger. So when I began to realize that people need to hear this, it dawned on me, and then the series of things that the Lord began to put on my heart and mind, it dawned on me that we should be walking billboards, mm. that we should actually wear it on us. And that's why the first items that we created as love outreach items to answer your question, how are we reaching people? With the t-shirts and the wristbands. It says, remember you are loved in Spanish, eres amado, in Portuguese, você é amado. Mm -hmm. And why those three languages? It's because I launched yeah. this outreach because at this point, it began to dawn on me that the Lord wanted this to be an outreach yes. so that we might teach people how to become love messengers, how to show people that we're lovable and we're all love able and to stretch our mm -hmm. love hearts, our, mm -hmm. our love muscle to mm -hmm. make us who we're called to be. So I decided to launch it in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It, I, I felt strongly that we should uh, do it in a place where there were a large number of Catholics who would all be of, uh, uh, interested in this mission of evangelization through love and the three most spoken languages in Rio de Janeiro at World Youth Day in July yeah. 2013 yeah. were Spanish, English, and Portuguese, which are, by the way, the three most spoken languages in the Catholic yeah. Church. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we wear it on us. We walk around billboarding mm. people, mm. sharing, yeah. and then we also do what we call love messaging. And I did this 3,000 times on the streets of Rio de Janeiro with this simple little outreach, and it says, outreach item, which says, remember you yeah. are loved. And I'd yeah. come up and I'd say, Joy, white or gray? White. White, remember you are loved. Thank you. And I put it right on there. There you go. How about you love message your husband? All right. I like that. Hun, remember you are loved Amen. dearly Thank you. by me. You are loved. And I love <laughs> that you just added those things. And when parents do it with children, for example, they go into a little litany. Right. My child, my firstborn, uh -huh. you brought down all this. And you mentioned something, Jim, a moment ago. How do we touch people? Literally here, we're touching people. Right. We've done this in Rio de Janeiro 3,000 times, and now we have over 10,000 wristbands in 80 yeah. countries around the world. It's one first step, and I'll get into some other steps. It's one first step in which we break the ice. If we really want to be love messengers, if we really want to be like Jesus, we need to touch people. Mm -hmm. right. After I did this 3,000 times on the streets of Rio de Janeiro, I come back home and I read a quote from Pope Francis, and he says, when you meet a beggar on the street, mm -hmm. do you toss or do you touch? Mm -hmm. Do you look him in the eyes and touch them because otherwise you've not touched right. their heart. Uh, yeah. And so I think that in this society it's become petrified, mm. hardened like a rock, therefore petrified, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, in which our hearts are not receiving love and not giving love freely. I think that we as Catholics need to go out there and break the ice. Mm -hmm. We need to be touching people, even strangers. And sometimes this means even a homeless man or a homeless woman who might be standing to you two feet away and you can smell them. Mm -hmm. and this has happened to me. And you have to make a decision there. Mm -hmm. Do I touch them or not? Yes. Do I give them the wristband or not? Right. Now, we need to be prudent with strangers. You need right. to discern when it's appropriate time to look someone in the eyes, touch, touch them, etc. But I did this with a homeless man in St. Augustine, Florida this summer when I was visiting family. And two days later, he was so delighted that I would have taken the time mm -hmm. to even look him in the eyes and right. talk to him. And I put it on him. And then two days later, I find him down one of the streets and I go, remember? And he goes like this <laughs> and shows me the wristband. Yeah, and hopefully Powerful. you softened his hardened heart. You know, so many times we're afraid to love because we're afraid we're going to get hurt. Mm. You know, it's like, ah, I did that once, or I was in love once and I got hurt, or, you know, I took that risk and I loved somebody and I shared my heart with them. Um, and it didn't come back the way I wanted it to. So I'm not going to do that anymore. How, how do we get from that place? You have hit on one of the core things that we're teaching people, and back to the question right. you asked earlier, how are we doing this? Besides the love outreach items, we're doing television, radio, training sessions, love coaching sessions as well, retreats, talks, I speak around the country and in other countries as well. And one of the things that I touch on is this, we do not love for our sake, we love for the other's sake. You see, love is a real emptying of self. It's a giving of yourself. It's beautiful when I'm love right back. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in fact, my nephew, remember? 
I said, remember you are loved, and he said, and you are too. Yeah. I receive that. It's beautiful when you do. Mm -hmm. But when you don't, you are still doing right. what needs to be done. And though it hurts, we then, that's why we also need to surround ourselves by sufficient, a sufficient number of people who are lovers, right. Right. so that if you don't love me, but Jim will love me. Right. If you don't love me now at this moment, right. or as if you act as if you weren't loving me, because that happens in family life. Right. That happens in the workplace. Right. That happens in society. Sometimes uh, the worst of us gets the better of us, right? right? But we need to remember Mm -hmm. right. that there are other people who love us and most importantly mm -hmm. these two things God loves me yes. deeply dearly to mm -hmm. the point of dying for me yeah. and therefore I will always have love and the second thing that I need to remember at all times is that even when the recipient is not able at the moment to receive the love of God through me right. I need to continue pouring that out because I am a vessel yeah. I'm a minister, I'm a messenger of love, right. a missionary of God's tenderness. Yeah. Reminds me of the verse uh, that, that says, you know, it's not that we loved God, but that He loved us. Mm -hmm. And so His love is always moving towards us. And people say, you know, if you were the only one who Christ died for, He would have died for you. But I think He would have died no matter what. You know, it's your choice what you want to do with that. And it's just so powerful to be free. I mean, you find your mm -hmm. life through being free, through giving your life, seeing something infinitely precious in the other, and, and, and giving not only your love to that person, but giving that other person him or herself. That's, that's true love, that Christ has come not only to give us his love, but to give us ourselves. Yes. I, in fullness, and yes. I think your approach really could help bring that forth. Yeah, I have had so many encounters with people all over the place, and it's amazing to me how, especially when they don't see it coming, these what I call unsolicited, genuine gestures mm -hmm. of love, uh, or gestures of genuine love, they don't see it coming, and it touches something in them, and they look at you like, mm. wow, me right. too, right. me too. It reminds you of uh, one day I'm walking out of daily mass, and I always have the wristbands on me and my purse, whatever, and, I, and sometimes I just feel inclined to love message right. someone. There were four young girls, and I, I thought, they're coming in after mass, I wonder why they're here. And I said, I think I'm gonna love message them. Now I wear the t-shirt often, mm -hmm. so, but I forget I have it on, right? Yeah. But it helps, and this is what happened. The four young girls come and I stop and I say, have you been loved? And they giggle and, and the one says, yes. And I go, by whom? By my mom? I said, but not by me. Mm -hmm. And I go like this and oh, I go, oh, because I only had one wristband mm -hmm. and there were four of them. Uh -huh. And she said, love me first. Mm -hmm. Now she had no idea right. Right. that I do this. Yes. What was it in her? Mm -hmm. It was the word, have mm -hmm. you been loved, but not by me. Yeah. She sort of sensed it's coming, right. it's coming to me. Right. There are a lot of people who are very broken. Mm -hmm. People right. who feel like they are outsiders and they need to be loved in. I'll tell you another story. I was speaking in New Zealand in five of their six dioceses in April and May, invited by the uh, Bishop's Conference. And as I was traveling through various cities, uh, giving talks, I would also love message people. So I, we come into this one city and the deacon and the priest take me out for lunch and we order at the uh, sort of cashier and we sit down. Now I had not slept well that night and I had a talk to give that same night at the cathedral. So I saw something that said, tall coffee. I said, that'll do the trick. <laughs> so I said, tall, they order some cappuccinos. And the barista comes over and brings their cappuccinos. And I look at these fun coffees with little uh -huh. foam and everything. Yeah. And I go, oh, wait, 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 what's a tall coffee? He says, oh, it's a big old tall coffee. And I go, oh, no, no, I want a fun coffee. And he goes, oh, yes, I can get you a fun <laughs> coffee. And I said, but I don't like to drink milk. I can do it with soy milk. I go, okay. So yeah. off he goes, and I say to myself, I'm going to love message mm -hmm. that man. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he knows God's plan for his mm -hmm. life, possibly even God's plan well, but just for his life. Uh -huh. So he comes over, and I go, what's your name? He says, Sonny. And I go, Sonny, remember you are loved. <gasps> He went, oh, yeah. thank mm. you. Mm. So off he goes and we pray. Now I don't know if Sonny is looking at us from over there and that he recognizes, mm -hmm. but what if he was? Now he knows right. that a Catholic has loved him. Right. So before we leave, he's by the door talking to someone. I go, oh, Sonny, can I take a picture of you? And he goes, sure. And he goes like this. Mm. And, uh, and with a nice little <laughs> pose with his wristband, all dressed in black with his white wristband with me for a nice contrast. And I said, I'm gonna put it on Facebook. He says, great. I go to give my talk that, l that night uh, someone even asked me from the audience, how do you minister to someone who's struggling with homosexual mm -hmm. tendencies and so forth? Then the next day, I put the picture up on Facebook and I go, Sonny, loved in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I'm traveling throughout New Zealand giving talks on this, that, and the other about the new evangelization. That's all I said. Well, lo and behold, 
someone from the audience at the cathedral knew Sonny, oh. tagged him on Facebook, uh -huh. and it shows now on his page, oh, and he says, and this is the point I'm making, mm. he says, I've got one too. Mm. Now yeah. here's an outsider who all of a sudden yeah. feels like he's right. an insider. He and yeah. then he said, and that new evangelizer lady, she's <laughs> nice. That's beautiful. Now I say, yeah. how did he know I'm a new evangelizer lady? Because yeah. he was reading the mm -hmm. post. Yeah. And nice is a compliment for someone who might think that we are haters right. instead of lovers. Right. So what's the point? We reach people, we touch them, we look them in the eyes, we call them by name, mm -hmm. we wear the message on us, we give them a message, we continue the dialogue through social media, we have the talks, we have all these means, we teach people to love more and love better Beautiful. and to love someone new each day. And look, hopefully, that'll keep going Amen. and going and yeah. going and going and we'll create a whole movement by which we are creating a paradigm shift. I, th I think we have some people that want to participate in this time. So we've got some uh, emails that have come in, I guess, or some calls that have come in. And so we're ready anytime they're ready. We'd love to hear from you. Send us any questions you have or comments, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com, or you can tweet us at EWTN hashtag Jim and Joy. And uh, so they're coming in. Joy, you see that one? Okay, dear Martha, many people think of the new evangelization as focusing on the youth. Your approach can reach people of all ages. Which generation seems to be the most open to your approach? Millennials, baby boomers, or Generation X? And this is from Clement from Brandenburg, Ontario. The truth is, this is reaching people of all ages, all backgrounds, all races, all faces, all lifestyles, and it has had an impact on everyone. I find that it, regardless of age, of anything. Yeah. Uh, I've told you about uh, these uh, couple of people I mentioned. The one was 15. She was there for her quinceanera, mm -hmm. for her 15th birthday. Mm -hmm. the, the girl who said, love me first. Yeah. This other fellow, Sonny, he was probably in his 20s. Uh, there was a grandmother who called me recently. She said, I have um, a grandson who had just come out of prison. He had been incarcerated. And I decided after hearing your talk that maybe I should write him a little note. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, remember you are loved yeah. and he immediately picked up the phone and called yeah. me so it had an immediate yeah. effect yeah. then I have children they want the wristband sometimes they're a little big on them so they put yeah. them all the way up <laughs> here um, we, we see them that the people are wanting to get them and give them to other people it's creating in all yeah. that are exposed mm -hmm. to the message a desire to do more to love more to yeah. reach out yeah. so it has no age limit yeah, and you know what really comes through to me more and more as you're sharing I mean, in one sense it sounds individualized, you know, like I'm taking this good news of love to this person, this person's receiving. But really, there's such a yearning there for community. Mm -hmm. I mean, the community element is so strong. So it's not just this individual love, it's being a part of that community of life mm -hmm. and love that comes from God. And it just begins to generate and more and more come forth. Yeah, and people are even doing outreach as groups. For example, there was a uh, youth group, a confirmation class in Los Angeles where the DRE said, I want uh, a couple hundred, I think it was, wristbands. And so she had a retreat on love and gave them talks and then love messaged and they love messaged one another, which is very beautiful with youth because you know how awkward sometimes teenagers can be about touch, about things. And so it, it sort of gets them out of their comfort zone and into right. the zone, the love zone. Yeah. And then they went to a nursing home mm. to bring the love to the elderly. Wonderful. There was another youth group that did the same in San Antonio, Texas. They did it with the youth and then they went to a uh, nursing home. There was a, um, a lady and, and her daughter who in Louisiana, they were preparing baskets for the homeless for Thanksgiving. And besides putting the food and the cans and whatever other goods, they put in some mm. wristbands. So there's no um, limit to how right. this can be done. You could go to uh, the incarcerated, you could go to your family members, you can go to your neighbors, you can go to strangers, you can go to your youth group, men's groups, women's groups, retreats. There was a couple's retreat in New Bromfields in Texas uh, a few months ago and so the priest had all the couples stand in different parts of the room and then they each put the wristband on one another and then they talked to one another, they looked mm -hmm. each other in the mm -hmm. eyes, they gave love. So this is just a starter. Right. This is to get the conversation going. This is to get you, loosen you up mm -hmm. a little bit. Although I must say that it's a, as a seminarian told me in Minnesota, it is a mini hug <laughs> that you carry with you mm -hmm. everywhere you go. Yeah, and you know, love is contagious. 
Oh, and it so is. It's, it's what you have, you want to share it, and it doesn't cost you anything to be kind yes. and loving. And uh, you really can see, especially when we see homeless people and uh, when we drive to work and you're seeing people, um, you know, I know people have a real apprehension about maybe giving money or thinking he might get alcohol or yeah. she might get alcohol. You could fix a little snack bag. Yes. You know, put a bottle of water in it, put a couple of granola bars, and then put a You Are Loved yeah. in it and, and have a beautiful outreach. Yeah, yes. thinking about the impoverished or the poor. And Mother Teresa speaks about there are people who are impoverished who are in poverty in our own homes. They're mm. impoverished not hearing or sensing love. You know what she said too, which is amazing. I have a quote right here. She said, th and this, this should really shake us up. She said, being unwanted, unloved, uncared for, forgotten by everybody, I think that this is a much greater poverty than the person who has nothing to mm. eat. Yes. So we need to eradicate that. She said, mm -hmm. the hunger for love is much more difficult to remove than the hunger for bread. So I said, the sooner we get to it, the better. Now here's a mm. woman who knows what hunger is. And if she says that love hunger mm. is much love deeper, hunger. it is an imperative. It is imperative that we get to it right away. And you said it's contagious. Love, uh, love messaging is spreading and it's contagious. And you said it doesn't cost us anything. And I would like to propose to all of our viewers and listeners that not loving is what right. is costly. Right. When you do not love, when you allow your heart to become petrified, when you do not receive love and, not, and you do not give love, mm -hmm. that's what gives us all these illnesses of the mind and the heart and the right. soul. That's what really impoverishes us. That's what makes our heart shrivel up. Mm -hmm. But when you give love, it's like you blossom. Mm -hmm. It's like you're happier than ever. Mm -hmm. People tell me, you're happier than I've ever seen you. Mm -hmm. I have always been a happy person. Mm -hmm. I am happier than ever than because that. giving love gives life. Joy, I think we okay, have we're going to go to our next call here. It says, Dear Jim and Joy, what is marriage and the family's role in the new evangelization? This is David from Los Angeles, California. I'm going to let you take that one, hon. Oh, it's, it's absolutely critical because it's God's plan to transform the world. And so life is a part of the eternal community of God. He gives human life, personhood, husband and wife together giving themselves in a covenant of love, giving themselves to each other freely, faithfully, fully, fruitfully. The new evangelization is, is coming to the family and saying, remember who you are. Mm. Remember you're a community of life and love and that you exist uh, to love one another for the procreation of children. So new evangelization means we need to again reclaim who we are. We need to come out of the amnesia that so many of us don't seem to even know what marriage and the family is. Mm -hmm. Or that marriage is just uh, for mutual benefit and not the procreation of children. It's about our mutual benefit and joy and the procreation of children and, and the family serving life, serving the church, serving society, serving the world. So the new evangelization for the family is absolutely critical. And it's so important, especially with all of this um, remaking of mm. what the family is and what is a marriage and all this verbal engineering that's going on. We, what a powerful witness in this day and age, first of all, to go the distance to stay married. What a witness mm -hmm. when you have your aunts and your uncles and they were married 42 years or your brother or your sister and they're married 53 years. And you, you, you know them as ordinary people. Mm -hmm. They're not saints. They're ordinary people, hopefully becoming saints because mm -hmm. sometimes in marriage you have an opportunity to become a saint. <laughs> and, and so the, the joy and, and to see that and what a witness. Um, to not just your family, but to your church in which you go to, and then to society yeah. to say, I, I can do that because yeah. they've done it. Martha, this whole area of the new evangelization, remember you are loved, you're apostolate. How could that work in the family setting? Remember you are loved to foster a new evangelization, to renew marriage, family, love of life. 
Well, on our website, rememberyouarelove.com, we have uh, a number of videos and a number of things, and we have the, our Twitter feed and our Facebook feed and so forth, but it only has about one hundredth of what we intend to put up there. So there will be sections for all kinds of areas in which we need to, as you said, Joy, rediscover the meaning and erase that amnesia that right. you said, Jim, to help people, and that would include things for families. How do you love your spouse truly, especially when your spouse is absent emotionally or absent physically or is hurting you? How do you love your children? How do you love your parents? How do you love your siblings? How do you communicate? So there's a number of things yeah. that we will be doing, not just on the website, but yeah. also through our talks and our training seminars. But to rediscover if we have forgotten or discover for the first uh, time what a family is, mm -hmm. what God's family is right. and right. how we belong to right. it, and to not allow society that is drifting so radically and so quickly away from our own Christian foundations to redefine for us what life and love, marriage and family are. We have the goods, not because we're better, Right. only because of God's mercy and right. we need to bring that to people. But this is where I believe that the message of love is all the more important and timely. And the papacy of Pope Francis is showing us that. If we want to carry out a new evangelization that is effective, if we want to win people's minds over, we better get over uh, quickly to winning their hearts. Right. We all know that when you win someone's mm -hmm. heart over, more often than not, the mind will follow. Some people are first converted in an intellectual conversion and then their heart follows. But more often than not, yeah. people want to know that we love them right. and then bring them in just the way Jesus did. When we were yet sinners, he died for us. Yeah. In this, God has proven his love for us, not that we loved him first. You had that quote from First John, but in that he loved us first. So let's go out there and love the world. Let's show the world what it looks like and therefore let's bring them in to the teachings of the church Beautiful. Wonderful. Well, Martha, it's been such a pleasure having you on the very first At Home with Jim and Joy today. And uh, you've done a wonderful job. I feel more loved. Um, I know you are more loved. He's the most loved <laughs> man on the planet. I he am. really is. And his aunt always calls and says, how's my Jimmy boy? I said, he is so loved. It's <laughs> pathetic. And so he's very loved in all as well. Well, we're going to take a break. But after this break, we're going to get to the scoop on the 2000 2015 World Meeting of Families, which will be in Philadelphia next year. We're getting excited, and we hope you are too. So Dr. Mary Beth Young joins us after this break, so stay tuned, and remember, you're always at home with Jim and Joy. back to At Home with Jim and Joy. It's your headquarters for the World Meeting of Families in 2015, Philadelphia. Dr. Mary Beth Yant is the Director of Content and Programming for the World Meeting of Families in the City of Brotherly Love. September 2015. Dr. Yant, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Well, we are blessed to have you. If there's anybody that knows about the World Meeting of Families, it's you. So please share the history and the vision for it. Yeah, the World Meeting of Families is a really important event. The Holy See's Pontifical Council for the Families puts it on every three years in various locations. It was, the first one was held in 1994 in Rome. And for the first time ever, it's gonna be here in the United States. Oh, that's exciting. And September so. September of 2015, here in Philadelphia. Well, as, as you were mentioning, uh, the city of brotherly love is just perfect uh, for a gathering of the world meeting of families. <laughs> what is the theme for this, this meeting and how does it fit so well with that beloved city? Yeah. It fits in with our city theme, but it also fits in with our theology as a family. We, just, we wanted to celebrate love and family. So ours is called 
Love is our mission, the family fully alive. Mm. Well, Dr. Yant, what happens during the World Meeting of Families? A lot. <laughs> it's going to be one big party is really what it's going to be. There are several elements. Every World Meeting has a preparatory catechesis. This is a book where the important teachings on the family that we want to make sure are conveyed through the World Meeting of Families are put together. Here's ours. This was just published, and you can order it through our website or our Sunday Visitor. And it's, you can see it's titled with our theme. In here are the important teachings that the Pontifical Council for the Family said, we want to make sure that this content is conveyed at the World Meeting of Families. So how is it conveyed? We have an adult Congress, technically following the pattern of the World Meeting of Families, it's called the International Theological Pastoral Congress. We call it the Adult Congress. Um, that is going to have internationally known and engaging presenters. There's going to be six general sessions in the Adult Congress, five of which are followed by breakout sessions, around 15 or 16 breakout sessions each. We have just finalized the program and are inviting speakers and once they are confirmed, we can do some press announcements of who these awesome and fun speakers are. Having been part of the committee and group, along with Bishop McIntyre that put together this Congress, I can tell you that the speakers are diverse, but all well-known and engaging it, it, and it's, international. It, it's helpful to hear kind of the, the format for the time, because you, know, you look at these world meetings of, of the family that have taken place, whether in Rome or Milan, I think one was, and, and kind of what, what I see is a million people gathered together for a mass. So people can get the impression that's, right, that's right. what this is. But you're saying there really is a Congress, people could be going day by day. And so just share once, right. once again how people can participate in it, whether going to one event or all week long. Yeah, let me just give you more of an idea of what the experience will be like. So there's the preparatory catechesis, and that content was, that's the book that I showed you, and that content was broken out into topics for the Congress, for the Adult Congress. Same thing for the Youth Congress. For ages 6 to 17, broken into age groups, of course, not all together, we have really fun activities that revolve around that and convey that content and sort of build a, an idea of celebration of the family. Well, so yeah. all of this content is focusing on the positive, like our theme, Love is Our Mission, the Family Fully Alive. Then scattered around the convention center, we're going to have really fun family activities. So the adults can go to the Adult Congress, the youth can go to the Youth Congress, and then as a family, there's going to be so many things that you can do together, creating a family cookbook, you'll be walking along the convention center and encounter wandering saints <laughs> that you can talk with. And there's a lot of other activities that we have planned. Some of them I can't talk about yet because they're not finalized, but I can't wait until all this is made public through our website so that people can see how fun this is going to be. So Dr. Yant, who is invited? Entire families are invited to this event? Mm -hmm. Everyone's invited. Um, whole families can come, grandparents can come by themselves, single people can come, priests are definitely coming, lots of women religious are coming. So everybody is part of and at some point was part of a family and the one thing that the world meeting is doing is not just strengthening bonds within families but helping society understand how important family is for society since after all family is the building blocks of society so this is for everybody it's for catholics it's for non-catholics 40 percent of our content is going to appeal to people across different faiths so for example developing morality through online resources I mean, that's applicable to Catholics, but that's applicable to, applicable to anybody who wants their children to grow strong. So um, it's, a, it's a variety of ways of discussing family and society. Well, it's so critical at this juncture in history. We were speaking earlier in the it show, is. almost uh, almost an amnesia regarding what is marriage, what is the family, 
and uh, so much confusion in the world and in society, and unfortunately sometimes even within the church. So um, I believe there's an extraordinary synod that's taking place this year. You've got the meet, world meeting of families. Right. I think the bishops are gathering again after that. You know better than I know, but it really yeah, so seems like this is being, this is being underlined very strongly by the Holy Father and by the Vatican. And that's good because really, when you look at our society and you look at our families, there's nothing more crucial than sustaining family and values and love and celebrating it together. Well, that's exciting. I guess the million dollar question is, is will Pope Francis be yes. there? <laughs> I knew that was coming. It always comes. So here's what we say. We call it right now the anticipated papal visit. Popes traditionally do come to say Mass at the end of the World Meeting of Families, so that would be on Sunday. Ours is, I, I should tell you the dates of our, our meeting too. It's from September 22nd to 27th. So Popes traditionally do come for near the end of the World Meeting of Families. Um, there's a festival of families on Saturday, and that is a cultural celebration of family and lots of um, ethnic dances and people, families bear witness to the role of faith in their lives, usually with the Holy Father present. And then there's a papal mass at the end. Right now we're calling it the anticipated papal mass because these aren't usually officially confirmed um, that the Pope is coming until four to six months out. And we're, not, we're more than a year away. So it's gonna be a while until that's officially confirmed. But I'm sure that you have seen some of these news announcements where people seem themselves very convinced that the Holy Father is coming. Uh, Dr. Yant, what do you have available through the website or other means to help prepare people for this time? Individually, uh, parishes, are there prayers? What can we put in our parish uh, newsletters? How do we get ready for this time? Because the year will <clears throat> come around. Uh, so what do you have regarding preparation? Thank you, we have so much. It would take me hours if I told you it all. I'd recommend that everybody go to worldmeeting2015.org and through there you'll see lots of resources and you can also connect with us via social media which is where our most recent, uh, you know, at the minute announcements comes out through Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, but we have a parish preparation packet that people can download in several different languages. We have a World Meeting of Families Prayer which I'm hoping we'll have time to say at the end of this interview together. And we have um, resources around the preparatory catechesis. We have fun, you know, um, saint activities. And our saints are Pope John Paul II and Saint Gianna for the World Meeting of Families. So we have some information about them. There, there's an endless amount of resources. God bless you and the great effort. And may God's love be poured out upon the city of brotherly love and throughout this world. Thank you, Dr. Yacht. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Joy, what an incredible show this has been an incredible time for us today your thoughts well i'm just too excited i'm just I, we did it i mean that's my first response is like yes thank you lord and thank you so much for the crew and everybody who worked so hard especially on that fabulous set to make you and me feel at home yeah. and hopefully our listening audience can say I belong there too, um, because th hopefully they'll see themselves in our marriage. Right. Just two people on this journey of love, doing our best with God's great help yeah. to stay married, to raise four children, have 15 grandchildren, and just to do this journey well with all the graces yeah. that the church and that God can give to us. So I'm excited, I'm glad it's done. I like starting something, I like finishing something, but we'll be back next week. And you know, we're gonna bring you every week, we'll have you know um, experts on life, marriage, and family. We're gonna have people coming via satellite um, to talk in and to say all that's happening, and especially the great attacks that are going yeah. on, yeah. on our lives, yeah. on, the, on the dignity of life yeah. and marriage and the family. I thought the theme for our show today through uh, Martha Fernanda Sordina yeah. and through Dr. Yant, uh, it was just focused on love yeah. and, and true love, the cross love, the crucified love of Christ, that love that moves towards us simply because we are and gives to us not only himself, but gives to us ourselves 
So we need to take that up. I think of the verse that says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. Yeah. So in all the complications of society and the world and in our homes and in our families, if we would but seek first the kingdom of God, then everything else will be given to you. And the theme was love right. during the show. A love we know, agape love, self-sacrificial love that sees something infinitely precious in the object, in the person of that love. And how it manifests itself in the family. You and I, and being parents of four great kids, they didn't always do everything right, did they? And sometimes they disobeyed and they made poor, poor life choices. And when they did, it hurt our hearts. Just like when we disobey the Lord, we hurt His heart. But He doesn't throw us away, He loves us. Mm unconditionally. Just the way that we have to do that as parents. Love our children unconditionally, no matter what. And to say that you're loved, you belong in this family, you belong here. And yes, we'll get through this storm of life, right. and some of them were storms. We'll get through it. With God's help, we're yeah. going to be okay, yeah. but we're going to see this thing through. And you know, we've learned in our own lives, in our own relationship, and with our kids, and with other people, that some of the best times to know that you're love, loved is when you've done wrong or when you've done nothing at all. Right. I mean, that, that little child nursing at the mother's breast, the child looking into, the mother looking into the child's eyes there. I mean, that child hasn't done anything but to be, and that child's being loved. Or when you've, you've sinned, you've done something wrong. And to, to separate the sin from the sinner and to say, you're my son you're my daughter, you know, you're loved. Doesn't mean that we don't have to ask forgiveness and make reparation and everything else, but, but the point is the essence of the person. And I hope that all of you out there today, no matter what age, uh, no matter your religious background or tradition, whatever it might be, uh, married, single, widowed, whatever's gone on in your life, if you're a victim of the culture of death, of this culture of a throwaway culture that you feel welcomed with us. I hope you felt welcomed during the show. That's our heart's desire, that's EW10's desire, that you would have that sense of true family, that we're in relationship because we come from God, we're going from God, that you're welcomed, you're at home with us here, and be a part of the conversation, right? So we're gonna have great apostolates, people, but you need to call in, you need to tweet in, you need to email in, we wanna hear from you and say, hey, you're not quite hitting you know, the nail on the head. This is what I think. This is what's important to me. This is why I left the church or why I want to come back to the church. Whatever it might be, you're a part of the family and we want to give you time to share your heart with us. And that's so important. So we want you all to be a part of this. And there's so many ways by listening and tweeting and in this d media explosion that we have out there. But most of all, we want you to pray for us because this is a lot. And, uh, you know, we get under attack because the last thing the devil wants is your marriage to survive. Yeah. He's got a plan for your marriage and he wants to destroy it. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your marriage and he wants to destroy your family. But this is the place where we get fortified and strengthened and built up and know that we can go the distance and with God and God alone, nothing is impossible. So thanks for joining us today on At Home with Jim and Joy. And as mother always says, you're an important part of the family and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. God bless you and all your loved ones. Bye now.